Hey guys, and welcome to a new video on this neural network and deep learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about the ResNet uh, neural network architecture. So we're going to talk about the residual blocks uh, that is actually like inside the ResNet. So in another video, we're going to cover some more different kind of architectures uh, within neural network and specifically the, the convolutional neural networks that we can use to solve computer vision uh, applications and projects. So we're going to cover inception and exceptions uh, as well in later videos and mobile net and so on. But in this video here, we're, we're going to focus on the residual block in ResNet. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here, and you can come go come chat with us about neural networks, deep learning, artificial intelligence, computer vision, and so on. And you can now also become a member of the channel here if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Like, and it will, everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. So first of all, here we're going to talk about the residual neural network here, where we have these individual uh, residual blocks here inside of the neural networks. So if you just start over here to the right, we actually like have this standard way of creating a convolutional neural network. Where first of all we have this X here, which is our input to our neural network, and then first of all we will have a weight layer here, or like a convolutional layer, where we do, where we do the convolution operation. Then after our, our weight layer here, we actually like pass that to a to a activation function layer here, and often we're using the the value activation function in this example here. And then when we have done that, we actually like just pass it through an, another weight layer and then through another activation function layer, uh, and so on. So this is the this the this the standard or like the basic block here of a of a standard convolutional neural network. But if we're using this residual block here um, for actual like creating this residual neural network here. And the main purpose or like the main idea behind the residual block here is that instead of trying to find like the direct mapping here, so we have an input here to a function. And then when we're just doing it in the standard way here with the convolutional neural network, then we're just trying to find the direct mapping from the input to the actual output, where in the residual, like the idea behind the residual here is that it's really hard to find the direct mapping um, from this input here to the output. So instead, we're trying to find the difference between the input and the output. And we can do that with the residual block over here to the left, as we can see. So we have the same layer here in the residual block here to the left, where we have our input that goes into our weight layer. And then we, get, get, uh, then we pass that to a ReLU activation function here. We gave it to the uh, weight layer here as well. But instead here in the residual block, we're actually like taking the input here or like this X here. And then we're feeding that forward to this add operator up, operator up here. So we actually like have the direct mapping plus this input here that we actually like have. And then we pass that to another uh, value activation function here in the ResNet block or like in the residual block. And the main idea behind doing this is, is that we can actually like find, um, instead of finding direct mapping, which is really hard to find when we go really deep in, in neural networks. So the main idea behind like creating this residual neural network here is that we can actually like stack more layers on top of each other or like the, more of these residual blocks here on top of each other where in standard neural networks if we just continue adding layers we'll just add more complexity and it will just take up too much performance if we're just stacking layer by layer but when we're using these residual blocks here we are actually like able to go deeper in neural networks create more complex and deeper neural networks without even like increasing that much in performance or like decreasing that much in performance so instead over here we have this f of x here plus the x here so we're trying to to find the difference uh, instead of finding or like trying to learn the direct mapping of the input here to the output. So this is the main idea behind the residual blocks. And now we're going to talk about like how these the residual blocks here can be used to construct um, a full residual neural network. So we actually have some different kind of variants of the ResNet here, where we, for example, have uh, ResNet 18, ResNet 50, and so on with these numbers over here to the right. So the numbers here is actually like just the number of residual blocks uh, where one residual block is the block that we just went over in the previous line. So when we're stacking these uh, residual blocks here on top of each other, then we can, for example, have this ResNet 18 architecture here, where we have 18 residual blocks stacked on top of each other. And then we can just keep adding residual blocks here and make the neural network deeper. So we actually like, create a more complex neural network that can solve more complex tasks. And we won't really add that much, uh, like that much increase, a decrease to the performance by adding these layers here. And we're actually able to, tr to train a neural network with 1000 residual blocks uh, stacked on top of each other. And if we try to like do the, the standard way of convolution uh, layers, where we have a convolution layer and then we have an activation layer and stuff like that. If we try to stack 1000 of those layers on top of each other, uh, we wouldn't even be able to train the neural network in that way because it's just way too hard to find the direct mapping from an input to an output where when we're using this ResNet or like the residual block here, we're actually like able to go deeper and create more complex neural networks. So over here to the right, I just have an example of how we can actually like get this from uh, TensorFlow and Keras. So they have these models here uh, built in and, and, and pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset, and then we can just 
uh, call this model here as, as I show down here. So we have this standard here where we can just call this ResNet 50 here. And then we can either include the top or like uh, set that equal to true or false if we want to use transfer learning, for example. So all of these different kind of neural network architectures here is often used for transfer learning. So if you want to learn more about uh, transfer learning, make sure to check the video out here as well in this tutorial here because it's really nice to solve uh, your own computer vision task and applications by just using a pre-trained model and then train it on your own data set. Then we can also load the weights here for an ImageNet data set, or we can specify some different kind of like classes, how many, how many classes do we actually like want to, to do predictions with, with this ResNet architecture here. And then we can just choose like, for example, ResNet 50 here or ResNet 101 or 152. And if we want to import this model here into TensorFlow and Keras, then we actually just have these two lines of code here where we just import TensorFlow as TF. And then we just have this model variable here, which will store both the architecture and the weights that we're initializing our ResNet architecture with, with if we have this weight set to ImageNet. And we have that because we're just using the default parameters uh, in this uh, small example here. So our model here will just be tf.carriers.applications. So the ResNet or all the pre-trained model is actually like stored in this applications uh, class here. And then we can just call this ResNet 50 here, and that will initialize that ResNet 50 architecture, where we have 50 uh, residual blocks stacked on top of each other. And we will initialize that with the ImageNet weight, so that uh, neural network has been trained on the ImageNet dataset. So if we just show you look at the summary of the ResNet that I showed you in the previous slide, so we just, if we just have these two lines of code here, and just call the summary uh, method on that model that we just initialized in the previous slide, then we can actually get a, sh a short summary and um, we can see these residual blocks here stacked on top of each other. So first of all here, we have an output from a previous, uh, previous residual block here. And then we have the first, the first uh, weight layer here, which is this convolutional layer here. And we can just see like the, the image dimensions over here to the right. But first of all, we have this, but first of all, here we have this convolutional layer here, which is our weight layer. And then we're using batch normalization before we're passing it to the activation layer uh, that I showed you as, as well. The reason why we're using batch normalization is to make our neural network when it's training, we want to make it more stable and we want to have it to learn faster because when we're using batch normalization, we're actually like scaling the values down to uh, to between like minus one and, and one and the neural network will, will be more stable during training when we're using batch normalization so often when we're creating these neural networks in between the layers or like the different kind of like in between the residual blocks here we actually have these batch normalization layer here as well but after batch normalization here we just pass it through our activation function or like our activation output uh, layer here and then after that we have another weight layer we have a batch normalization layer we have an activation layer we have a, a weight layer, batch normalization, and then we have this add here where we add the actual like, input uh, to this mapping here that we're trying to learn. So instead of trying to learn the direct mapping as in the, in the standard or like the original uh, convolutional neural networks, then we're actually like trying to, to find uh, the difference between those two. So we're, so we're not finding like the direct mapping, but the difference uh, because we're, we're feeding forward that input to the actual output here, and then we're adding it together. So we're learning the difference. And this is, this is an example of a residual block here um, in one of the uh, ResNet architectures here that we loaded in. So in the, in the case that we're using ResNet 50, as I showed you in the last slide, then we will actually like have 50 of these blocks here stacked on top of each other. And then we have a, a really complex and deep neural network uh, that is, has really good performance when training it on a new data set um, later on by using transfer learning. So here we have an OU or the different kind of pre-trained models and architectures that we have built into Keras and TensorFlow. So we can see over here to the left, we have some different types of, of the ResNet architectures here. So we have the 50, 101 here, and 152. And then we also have the version two of them, uh, which we're going to talk about in the next slide here. And that's the last thing. And we also have this exception here, the VGG 16 and 19. We have the mobile net in inception, which we're going to cover uh, in another video, uh, where this VGG 16 here is actually like just uh, the, the old school uh, convolutional neural network, where they just stack the, the, the blocks on top of each other, or like the convolutional layers on top of each other. And then we have the exception model here and the inception that we're going to talk about, the, the mobile net, which is kind of like the, an optimized version of exception for mobile devices. And then we have these different kind of ResNet pre-trained models and architectures here, which is used a lot in a lot of different kind of computer vision um, applications. So the last thing here that we're going to talk about is the ResNet version one versus the ResNet uh, versus, uh, version two. 
So over here to our left, we have the ResNet version 1 here, which we already went over, which is residual block here, where we have this weight layer uh, that is passed to an activation function, and then we have a weight layer. We sum them up here, so we actually like find the differences there, and then we pass that uh, to another activation function layer here. But in version 2 here, we actually like have this value activation here before we're adding the block. So the last thing that we're going to do here in the residual block here in version 2 is that we're actually like uh, in uh, like adding the input here uh to this like um this mapping here that we're actually like trying to to train here or like trying to find when we're training our neural network so the main idea here is that we're actually like taking uh, the input here and then we pass it to an activation function um at the start here and then we pass that that, that output from the activation function to the weight layer then we pass that to an, another activation function layer we pass that to a weight layer and then after that uh, we're adding the input here to the actual like mapping here that we're trying to find so we're now trying to find the difference again in the version 2 here as well but the main difference here is that we're actually like having this activation uh, block here or like this estimation layer here for the summation here and we actually like do it before that we pass it through our weight layer so over here to the left we have our input to the weight layer to an activation function layer where over here in version 2 we have an activation function weight layer and then we add it here at the end where at the end here we add the, we add the actual like uh, mapping here or like the difference here from the input to the output and then we pass that through another activation function, which is often a uh, value in this example here. So this is the main idea behind ResNet version 2 and ResNet version 1. But we can also have some different kind of like uh, configurations of the ResNet version 2 and, two and, and, and version 1 as well. Or we have some different kind of like things that we can mix around here, like when the batch normalization comes, like if the batch normalization comes before the weight layer here or after the weight layer, or like uh, we have this activation function here before the weight layer and so on. So we have different kind of configuration configurations that we can play around with with both the ResNet version one and ResNet version two. But this is the this is the most uh, standard ones here just to demonstrate to you how this ResNet version one here and ResNet version two works, and also the idea behind having this residual block that tries to learn the difference between the input and output instead of trying to learn the direct mapping which is really hard when we're training really deep and complex neural networks so that's pretty much it for this video here guys we've been over the residual block how we can stack the residual block on top of each other and create the resnet architecture we went over the version one and version two of the resnet uh, neural network that is already built into carriers and tensorflow and we can just uh, directly use that uh, with the pre-trained weights as well from the ImageNet data set and then we can use that to actually like do transfer learning so some of the way, some of the other different kind of neural network architectures that I showed you throughout this video here as well as inception and exception, we're going to cover that in another video uh, where we're going to talk about those architectures and why those architectures are good and how they're compared to this ResNet architecture here as well. So thank you guys for watching this video here. Remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here, and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more of it in the future. I'm currently also doing a computer vision tutorial where we're going through like the basic operations in computer vision. We're going over some camera calibration, stereo vision, how we can estimate depth to persons or like different kind of objects in the image, and also how we can detect those objects in the images. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here, or else I'll just see you in the next video, guys. Bye for now.